And then what happens? Sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi lard. We have made subservient everything that is in the heavens and the earth to you. Hey? How can there be fear in the heart of a Muslim? How is it possible? Allah wants to protect, what does he do? Throw the baby in the water. Alright, so fine, that's fine. Up to this point, good. Baby thrown in the water, maybe the river takes him away somewhere. No. <laughs> the river takes him right into the palace of the Pharaoh. Right into the palace of the Pharaoh. Naturally, if you are the king of a country, you are sitting on the bank of the Nile, where is your palace? On the bank of the Nile. You want the waterfront, right? Everybody wants waterfront. <laughs> so the river takes him into the palace. Even then, fine. Okay, river takes him into the palace. Nobody recognizes him somehow. No, 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 no. Takes him into the palace. They pick up the child. They bring the child. Asya radiallahu the, the foster mother of Musa. She looks at the child. She falls in love with this child. But then, what, Allah, what does Allah do? Maybe they, you know, the mother loves the child. Therefore, no, no, no. The child is brought to Firon. What does Firon do? Firon calls this, his magicians and he calls those people who prophesy. They tell him, look at this child. Is this the one? They said, this is the one. They recognize, this is the one. Allah does not need to fool anybody, my brothers and sisters, my brothers. Allah does not need to fool anybody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the hearts of people are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants to show his khudrat. They recognize the child. They said to Firaun, they said, Your Majesty, this is the one. Unfortunately, 70,000 others died, but they were not the one. The poor fellow, they just died. This is the one we were looking for. So now what should happen? They should kill him. What does Allah do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the fire which has the power to burn and makes the fire the guardian of, uh, of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes Firaun and makes Firaun the guardian of Musa alayhi salam. Not anybody else. Himself, Firaun himself. His wife comes to him and says, look, forget about all these Jyotishis and you know all these Josiars and Vadyars and whatever else, forget them. There is a baby, the newborn baby, we bring him up, he will love us, how is he going to destroy anybody? We have no children, we adopt this child. And the man listened to his wife, and you see what happened to him, eh? he listened to his wife. So now what happens? Allah's wada, what did Allah say to Musa alayhi salam's mother? He said, you put him in the water, we'll get him back for you, don't worry about it, just throw him in the water. He'll come back to you. So now, Musa alayhi salam, and we know the whole story, his sister goes and looks for him, he does not take anybody's milk and so forth, now they are in a panic, what do you do with this child, doesn't drink. And the sister comes and says, you know what, I know a woman, I think he will drink her milk. No, oh, bring her, who is she, what is her? Now what happens? Now the Firaun, Musa alayhi salam, is now the prince of Egypt. He is being brought up in his own mother's house and his mother is now getting a salary from the palace to breastfeed her own child. And obviously salary from the palace means that not only the mother eats, the entire family of Musa alayhi salam is now living in great luxury because the mother is now breastfeeding the, the son of the king who is actually her own son. This is Allah. This is Allah. Who else had Allah? Two men. Who eventually had to leave their country. And there was a bounty of a hundred camels each on their heads, dead or alive. Why? Did they rob anybody? Did they murder anybody? Why do you put a bounty of dead and alive on their heads? Only and only because they said, Ashhadu Allah la ilaha illallah. Only and only because they invited you to come away from the fire and into Jannah. The two men. Ithrain, Filghar, they are in the cave. 
and one of them looks up and he sees the feet of the enemies who are searching for them. And he said to his companion, and this whole story is being told to us by whom? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is watching. Allah described this whole thing. And Allah said, وَقَالَ لِسَاهِبِهِ And that's where Abu Bakr al-Siddiq has this position of being the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah called him لِسَاهِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَانَا He said, don't be sad, don't be afraid. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya Rasulullah, if they look down, they will see us. But how can they look down? Because who controls the eyes? Who controls the neck, whether it will bend or it will not bend? How can they look down? And how does Allah protect them? See this thing, Allah said about the weakest of the houses. Inna au hanal buyut, la baytul ankabut. Allah said the weakest of the houses is the house of the spider, the web of a spider. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use to protect Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his companion Abu Bakr as-Siddiq? What does Allah use? Does he put a steel gate? Web of a spider. So Abu Bakr as-Siddiq said, Allah, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, we sent down sakina on them. And we help them build junudil lam tarawha. And we help them with forces and army that they could not see. Allah sent his malaika to help. Many, many years later, ten years after that incident, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has passed away. It is the khilafah of Abu Siddiq radiallahu anhu. A khilafah which is full of turmoil. There is riddha everywhere. People are threatening to come out of Islam. There is people who are attacking Medina. There are armies which are, which are marching to, to, over, to overwhelm and wipe out Islam. And Abu Bakr Siddiq Adelanu himself goes out in Ghazawat. And they tell him, how can you go, Ya Khalifa to Rasulullah? If you go, if you get killed, what happens? He said, how can I stay here when the deen of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is in danger? I will go and I will fight. And all of this going on. And people notice that Abu Bakr Siddiq Adelanu has no, absolutely no anxiety on his face whatsoever. Nothing. There is no fear. There is no anxiety whatsoever. Everyone else is losing sleep and they are worried and they are concerned. What will happen to Medina? What will happen to Islam? In its, in its fledging stage, in its, in, its, in its nurturing stage, in a very, very weak and very new nascent stage, it is, it is about to be wiped out. And here is the Khalifa of Rasulullah He is in, at a sta- in a state of complete peace. They went and asked him, this is, Ya Khalifa to Rasulullah, how is it that there is not even a sign of care on your face? He recited this ayah of the Quran. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, He sent down His sakina on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and myself. And He said, that day and today, He said, I have never felt fear or anxiety after that. He said, that was the only day I was afraid. He said, after that I was never afraid. Achieve the shah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The connection with Allah. Very quickly now, therefore, how do we get this connection? I want you to remember six things. Number one, we get connection. The first step of the connection was what I said in my khutbah in the afternoon. What is the first step? Tawbah. We make tawbah. We make tawbah and we remove all the stuff that we have in our heart, all the ghayrullah in our heart, we throw it out and we fill our heart with the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We make tawbah, the first step is to make tawbah. Go make a list of all the things that you are afraid of and cross that list out and tear the paper, throw it away and say, Allah, I am afraid only and only of you. Nothing else. Make tawbah. Make our lives completely obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make a list of all the things in our lives where we disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no matter how small it is, and make a niya right now sitting here in the masjid saying, 
from today I will not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any matter whatsoever. Do we make this niya inshallah? Inshallah. So first step tawbah. Second step, make shukr. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A man came to Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. He was giving a khutbah and in the khutbah he talked about the importance of shukr. And as he came out of the door, a man came to him and he, he, the man was in a bad state. He was very poor and he was like a beggar and he was, he had some, you know, some illness or whatever. He was hungry for a few days. He came to Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab and he said, it's all right, I'm in moment and you say all these things about making shukr. I mean, look, at, look at me, what do I have to be thankful for? What have I got? You want me to be thankful to Allah for what? Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu told him, can you pass water, can you urinate without pain? He said, yes. He said, thank Allah for that. He said, thank Allah for that. My brothers, you know and I know that it is the, the tragedy of the human being. That he remembers the bounties of Allah only when it goes away. All your life you are running up and down stairs like a monkey who don't worry about your knees. Do you stop for a minute in the middle of the stairway and say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rab, you have given me knees that don't pain. Did you ever do that? But a time will come. And may Allah protect you from that and may that time not come on you. But I have that now. When if I go up the stairs, my knees tell me. Excuse me, hello, we are here. My knees talk to me. Alhamdulillah, I was still mobile, I still go up and down, but I'm just saying that the way, I mean, I used to jump from that height, I would jump down there, no problem. Even now I can jump, but after that you have to carry me out from here, because <laughs> the jumping is not the, the, not the difficult part, yeah? it's what happens after the jumping. It's a tragedy of the human being. We do, how many, how many of us who do not have to wear glasses? How many of us who do not have to wear glasses, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rab, you gave me a 2020 sight. I can read and I can have a distant sight also, no problem. You know when we will think about that? When you, are, when you start needing glasses. Now you say, oh my God, I got to carry this thing on my face and you know it's difficult and it sweats and it, oh this and this. So make shukar, make tawbah and then thank Allah once again, sit down with a piece of paper, write a list. I run a whole Tarbiya course, and that Tarbiya course we actually make people sit and do this. It's just, we have to do it, we must do this. It's not enough to simply come and listen to a bayan and say, Mashallah, Mashallah, go home. No. Sit down, make a list of all the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala one by one by one. Thank Allah for Iman, thank Allah for Tawbah, thank Allah for your for your health, for your money, for your children, for your wife, for your husband, for whatever you have which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, make shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Point number two. Point number three, sabr. Make a niya now that you will never ever complain about anything before anyone. Ready? Make the niya. Yes? Never again. Never again will you complain about anything to anybody. My father, subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give him Jannah. He passed away in 2007. I requested to make dua for him. He was a doctor. And towards the end of his life, he had some health problems and he had to be in hospital for, for, for some surgery. So the doctor comes, the surgeon comes and asks him, Doctor, how are you feeling? My father said, Alhamdulillah. So we are telling him, boss, please tell him what's wrong with you. I mean, you, Alhamdulillah is yes, but you know, you are in the hospital. Something is wrong with you. So tell them, he said, I'm fine. Are you? You are fine, yes, but you know, something is wrong. So we have to tell him, please explain to the surgeon what. <laughs> As you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, last two months of his life, he was in a coma. He was in a coma for two months. But in that coma, he was, in a, he was dead to the world. I mean, they used to come, the doctor used to come and, and, and try to, you know, see if there is any uh, sign of consciousness. There was absolutely no sign of consciousness. Just that he was breathing and he, he had to be fed through a tube and so on, in a coma. In that coma, he would sneeze and he would say, Alhamdulillah. Hajib. First time he did that, we thought he woke up. So he went and we asked him, we called him and this, nothing, he is dead to the world. And after that, I, I, my mother used to spend that, that two months, my mother sat by the bed, simply looking at my father. She would get up for salah, come back and sit there. That's it. Two months. So I have my